After thousands of years, this object disappeared from the Bible um, at the time, well, uh, around about 650 years before Christ. Uh, it's not mentioned again in the Bible after that, it vanishes. Um, and, and yet here is its worship in, in 20th century Ethiopia today. Isn't How do we explain this? And, it was, and, and, and as I dug deeper, I began to realize that uh, actually there was a real possibility they did have the Ark of the Covenant and that it is connected to the mystery of the Ethiopian Jews um, and, and that the story they themselves tell about it which connects it, it's a very romantic and lovely story they say, in brief, that the Queen of Sheba, famous Queen of Sheba, was an Ethiopian Queen and that uh, she, when she traveled to Jerusalem to meet Solomon which is described in the Bible, big, big episode in the Bible um, she didn't only exchange wisdom with him, she also exchanged bodily fluids and she became pregnant uh, with King Solomon's son, who was to be called Menelik, which, which actually means the son of the wise man. And uh, pregnant, she left Jerusalem, returned to Ethiopia, gave birth to her son Menelik there. At the age of 20 or 21, he wanted to visit his famous father in Jerusalem. He traveled north, went to Jerusalem, spent a year there, and at the end of the year contrived to steal the Ark of the Covenant from Jerusalem and take it off to Ethiopia, and there it's been ever since. That's the Ethiopian story. I believe behind that legend there's a true history of how it really got there, and that's what I, that's in the end what I ended up writing uh, my, my first book of historical mysteries about, which was The Sign of the Sea. And wasn't the speculation about the Ark of the Covenant that it was some sort of a technological device that was actually radioactive? Yes, I got into that speculation myself at some length, because as I started to investigate the subject, not only was the Ethiopian side of it, fascinating and mysterious, but the object itself is quite extraordinary. I mean, it dominates the Bible at the beginning of the story. From the time they're in Sinai, the, the Exodus, there, there's a tremendous role for the Ark of the Covenant, and they follow it through the wilderness, and it's marched around the city of Jericho, it knocks down the walls of Jericho. Um, it's hugely important. The Temple of Solomon is built with only one function, and that's to serve, and this is a quote, as an house of rest for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. That's the only reason that the Temple of Solomon is built. It's like, at a certain point, it's got to be placed out of the public view. It's, it's always a dangerous object. As they're uh, c carrying it, it strikes people dead. If somebody touches it by chance, psh, bolt of fire comes out of it. Actually, I mean, Spielberg and the Indiana Jones movie, the way they portrayed the Ark was spot on how it's described in the Old Testament as an absolutely devastating, deadly instrument. So it, the, the Israelites use it in battle. It, there's accounts of it flying into the air, rushing towards the enemies of Israel, emitting a moaning sound. They all fall down dead. Then there's a, a, a later account where the, the Philistines capture the Ark of the Covenant. They take it off to the city of Ashdod. Then they make the huge mistake of opening it, and they treat it like a tourist object. People walk by, and the Bible says 50,000 died. And how did they die? Cancerous tumors. That's what's, that's what's actually described in the, in the Bible. So the, the Ark of the Covenant is supposed to contain within it the, what's left of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, correct. That's what's inside of it. That's what's supposed to be inside of it. And, and also, isn't there... A uh, written upon by the finger of God himself, if you, oh, if you, if you take okay. the Old Testament. And, that's, and, they, and that, they're the kind of power source of the Ark of the Covenant. And what that power is, uh, I did get into some speculation on this. It, it, it seems obvious to me that, that at one level the Ark of the Covenant is an out-of-place technology. It's a, it's a strange technology which has presented itself in a surprising context where you don't expect to find it and, th and there it is. So I started to look into the background of this. Where did this come from and, and where it comes from is Egypt. Moses is intimately connected with the Ark of the Covenant. Moses is raised in the household of the Pharaoh in Egypt. He's groomed to be a future Pharaoh. Uh, and then the falling out comes and he leaves with the children of Israel and builds the Ark of the Covenant in the, in the Sinai. Uh, now if he was raised and groomed as a future Pharaoh, then he would have been a magician. He would have been versed in the high magic of ancient Egypt. And those guys could do virtually anything they set their minds to. I mean, anybody who can build the Great Pyramid of Egypt if it was built when we're told it was built. Um, it, it's an extraordinary... And Even if it was stunning. built before then. When, for people who don't done. understand uh, what you're talking about here, you, your, your premise, or a big part of it, is that there is 
somewhere around what is it 10,000 years ago somewhere around then towards the end yeah. of the last ice age humanity was probably mostly wiped out or wiped out in a big way and yeah. we had to rebuild from there we had so, to rebuild and we and I believe that we lost uh, a, a civilization at that time an entire civilization been, yeah, which has not been recorded by history uh, and that it went uh, underwater with the rising sea levels and what led me to this the reason I became interested in pursuing that line of inquiry was the Ark of the Covenant because it seemed to me it seemed to me like a piece of technology that was out of its place in history in the way that it was described. I'm not wishing to put down the spiritual aspects because they are there, uh, but there were definite technological aspects to this device. And then I had to ask myself, well, where could that knowledge have come from? And through Egypt, we then start to find that Egypt itself looks back to an older time. The ancient Egyptians didn't regard themselves as the beginning of their story. They regarded themselves as quite a late point in their story. Uh, and they look back to the time of the gods, which they called Zeptepi, the first time when there was a golden age. And they speak, and there are texts, the Edfu building texts, which speak of the gods living on an island, a gigantic flood coming. Most of the gods are killed, odd thing to happen to gods. And then they uh, come and settle in Egypt. The survivors come and settle in Egypt. And uh, So Egypt is the product of an even far earlier civilization, but, but the history of Egypt goes back way, way further than people think it does. That's my view.